The first thing to say is that this is a prototype aircraft and the instrumentation isn't exactly the same as the instrumentation uh, that we had on our production models as flown by British Airways. So having said that, it's a complex panel as you can see, hell of a lot of instruments on it, but it's all broken down into sort of logical sections and we'll go through it section by section. Here you've got everything associated with electrical power and electrical generation, power generation. Basically in the middle here you've got everything to do with fuel management and centre of gravity. And there in fact is the centre of gravity meter. We had a rather bigger uh, meter in our aeroplanes, rather more visible. This is a, um, a rather <laughs> a stealth version of a, of a C of G meter. And that, would, that meter, by the way, would show the actual position of the centre of gravity. And then you'd also have two little indices on each side of it showing the forward and aft limits of centre of gravity for any stage of the flight throughout the whole speed range. So that was all fuel and fuel management. And then over on this side here is basically the top section is all to do with air conditioning um, and pressurization and stuff like that. And then you get down into engine instruments down here. And here, for instance, since we've been talking about intake ramps, um, variable geometry intake ramps, there's the gauges that show the positions of the engine intake ramps in all four engines. An unusual thing that was fitted to Concorde, and I don't think, no, this airplane doesn't have it. Uh, we had fitted down here a radiation meter because the authorities were very concerned at the sort of heights we were flying at. You know, you're flying at sort of 50,000 feet plus for two and a half hours on each Atlantic crossing. And they thought this solar exposure to solar radiation um, might cause people to be sterilized and things like that. So there's a lot of concern about this. And there was a drill, in fact, uh, this meter had three zones on it. it, had a green zone, amber zone and a red zone. If it ever got into the red zone, um, you immediately had to descend to thicker air um, in order to get out of the solar radiation. Um, in fact, as far as I'm aware, certainly in British Airways, and I'm pretty sure in Air France too, there has never been a single case of a radiation alert caused by solar radiation. Never. Not once. So that was a concern that was a justified concern, but it proved to be uh, it proved not it proved to be a non-event. Uh, the only time I've ever had um, the radiation meter go off, well, funnily enough, uh, was at 6,000 feet on my way into Heathrow, and we were just south of Aldermaston. So I think it must have been a leaky day in Aldermaston. <laughs> Um, the one position I mentioned earlier, that the, the, the aircraft expands by about nine inches as a result of heating. And this is the place you can see it. As you can see here, at the back end of this engine panel and this bulkhead here, there's no gap at all. When the aeroplane was flying at Mach 2 and it all cooked up and heated and expanded, there was a gap about that wide. And it's quite amusing to note that on one of the very early flights, there was a Concorde flight engineer who'd just completed his, his um, course and had been checked out on his own. And he was looking for somewhere to put the aircraft's technical manual. We'll pretend that's the aircraft's te technical manual. It's a big document. It's a legal document. The captain signs acceptance of the aeroplane before you depart anywhere. And when you finish the flight, the captain will sign off with any defects recorded. And then the next captain, when he takes the airplane on for the next sector, he will sign acceptance. So it's an actually a legal 
document that must be properly completed at the beginning and at the end of every flight. And here's this flight engineer flying along this great big document that's in the bloody way. Where can I put it? And he spots this gap here and he stuffs it in there thinking, gosh, I didn't see that space there. That's the obvious place to put the tech log. So he stuck it in there, forgot all about it. The airplane then decelerated and descended into New York. And of course the airplane shrank back to its normal size again. The tech log was locked firmly into the structure. <laughs> no way of getting it out. So embarrassed groveling signals had to be sent to the CAA seeking special dispensation to <laughs> not do the normal formalities. And the airplane was then got airborne from New York and stretched again and the tech log was retrieved. <laughs> One very embarrassed flight engineer. So there we are, I think that's about it.